Hi everybody, Paul Sacconi here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to create buttery smooth, not those rolls, buttery smooth credit rolls with DaVinci Resolve. I'll show you the easiest way to create sophisticated credit rolls with different text styles, formatting, and multi-column layouts, all using a single text note. Then I'll show you how to animate your credits so they look great and scroll smoothly at any frame rate. Here we are on the edit page. The first thing we need to do is add a fusion composition from the effects library to the timeline and stretch it out. Next, select the fusion composition and switch to the fusion page. Here on the fusion page, you'll see the work area at the bottom of the screen. It's called the flow and is where we build effects by connecting nodes together. This media out node is what gets sent back to the edit page. There's an inspector on the right side of the screen to adjust settings and then a viewer in the middle at the top. On the toolbar, you'll see a text tool. Just drag it into the flow and then drag a line from the square box on the right and connect it to the input arrow on the media out tool. So now, whatever's in the text tool will be seen on the edit page. When the text tool is selected, all of its controls appear in the inspector at the right. Just click in the box and start typing. You have all of the standard text controls that you would expect in a titling tool, including new live font previews as you scroll through the list. We'll select our font, and set the size. The text tool also recognizes tab stops, just like any word processor. When you type and press the tab key, the text moves over. Fusion lets you define the horizontal position and alignment of text for each individual tab stop. For example, if I want tab one to be centered, I would type 00 in this position box, and now it's centered. I'm going to turn the checkerboard pattern in the viewer off so it's easier for you to see. Then I'm going to zoom out using the command key and scroll wheel on my mouse. You can also move the image around by holding the middle mouse or scroll wheel and dragging. At the top of the frame, you'll see little boxes. These are the tab stops. If you click them, you can toggle between left aligned, centered, and right aligned text for that tab stop. You can also grab the vertical tab line and position it wherever you'd like. Let's reset this in the inspector. Now we'll add a second tab stop and we'll type character name. Then we'll go down another line and tab over three times and type actor name. Whenever I press tab, you'll see a new tab stop is added in the viewer. Now let's set up custom positions for each tab. I'll go into the tab menu, select tab two, align that to the right and move the position to about here. Next, I'll do tab three, change the alignment and move its position to about there. I can also type the numbers in the inspector to place it exactly where I want it. Now it's starting to look like something. So what happens if I take these tabs and put them on the same line? Now I have character name next to the actor name and if I put a tab between them, this is my third tab stop on the line, the actor name moves into the column that we set up. Let's show you another one. Hit return. Tab twice, one, Two, type a character name, tab three, then I type an actor name. Tab one, two, character, tab three, actor. You get the idea. This is how you can make multi-column layouts. Now, you can also change the individual style for any character. To do that, right click in the text box and turn on character level styling. When you do, you'll see the modifiers option light up at the top of the screen. Click on modifier, go into the viewer, Lasso to highlight the text you want to change, and then change the font and size for the selected text. And then you just repeat this process until you get all of your text in. I usually set up long credit rolls in a word processor. Let me show you how that works. Here's my credit roll on the right side. Tab one is everything that's going to be centered. My two column layout uses tabs two and three for the left and right columns with the text aligned accordingly. My three column layout uses tabs four, five, and six to be the left, center, and right columns respectively. Now, let's see what that looks like in a word processor. On the left side, I've got a reminder of what each tab stop is used for, and on the right, I've got a pages document with my credits. I'm going to go to the view menu, and whether you're using pages or word, you can turn on the invisible characters that allow you to see the tabs, which look like little arrows. These are one tab, so we know they'll be centered. Then we get to the two column section and you'll see two tabs, a character name, a third tab, and an actor name. Two tabs, a character name, a third tab, and an actor name. And we keep repeating this process. For the three column layout, I tab over four times, type a name, fifth tab, type a name, 
sixth tab, type a name, and all of those names will go where they're supposed to go. Now I'm going to select all of that text and copy it, then switch back to DaVinci Resolve. Let's delete the old text tool and start fresh with a new one. I'm going to paste my text in there. It does look like a little bit of a mess right now, but let's just get this set up the way we want it with our font to start, which is Abonneer Next, the Demi Bold style, and set the size of the font way down. Now we're going to set up our tab stops. Tab 1, we want to be centered, so we'll type 0. Tab 2, we want to set at negative 0.009, and we want it to be aligned like this. Tab 3, we'll set at positive 0.009 and set the alignment. For the three column layout, we'll set tab 4 to negative 0.25, tab 5 to 0 so it's centered on screen, tab 6 to 0.25. Now let's set up our individual character styling. Right click in the text box and turn on character level styling and hit the modifier button at the top. I'm going to select smooth and buttery, then change the font, and we're going to change the size so it's nice and big. Then I'll grab the two column header, change it to the same font, and adjust the size again. We'll do the same for the three column header as well. Now I'm going to add a transform node so we can do the animation. I'm using the transform node because it lets me work with numbers that represent the real resolution of the image. Normally, everything in Fusion is in the range of 0 to 1, so the Y position defaults to 0.5, which is the center of the screen. By turning on Auto Resolution, the values change. You can see X and Y position is now 960 by 540, which is exactly half of 1920 by 1080, placing our text in the center of the screen. Let me drag this down off screen. It's down at about negative 827. I'll add a keyframe and then go forward about 20 seconds and grab it again. We'll move it off the top of the screen this time. A little more, just until it's off screen. Now here's the reason why you often see judder or skipping text on credit rolls that are not smooth. What happens when I animate between point A and point B is that the Y position is calculated by dividing the total distance traveled by the amount of time. That means the Y position can fall between lines in our 1080 image more often than not. At this point in time, I'm on line 1448.638. Well, we can't draw in between lines. On any given frame, you can only draw on lines 1 to 1080. So right now, it's 1448.6 and it's going to round up to 1449. The next frame is going to fall on 1453, so that's four lines of movement. From 1453 to the next is 1457, that's three lines. Then 1457 to 1462, which is five lines. So on some frames, it'll move up three lines, some four, sometimes even five, and that's what creates the judder. The subpixel math is messing it up. This results in text that doesn't scroll smoothly. Let me show you a better way. I'm going to reset the transform node and turn on auto resolution again. On frame zero, we're going to set it at negative 820.000000 and add a keyframe. Fusion is really precise, so if you don't type all those zeros, you will at some point get fractional or subpixel values. I'm going to move forward one single frame and change the Y value to negative 815.0000. Now we have our animation moving five lines in one frame. What I want to do is tell Fusion that the text should move five lines in every single frame. There's a special keyframe tool that lets us do this. We're going to go into the spline editor by clicking spline at the top of the screen. We'll check the transform controls so that we can see them in the spline editor and select the keyframes. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the keyframes and make them a little smaller so you can see what's about to happen. Along the bottom, you'll see a series of keyframe tools that let you create linear or bezier keyframes, loop, ping pong, stretch, squish them, and more. Clicking on the set relative button will extrapolate the motion throughout the rest of the clip without having to manually set any more keyframes. You can see in the transform window that we're just going by five lines at a time. We're at line 1035, 1040, 1045. It moves by five lines in every frame. Let's go back to the edit page and take a look. You'll see that our credit roll takes about 17 and a half seconds. If you wanted to make the credit roll longer, you could do a couple of things. You can make the text bigger and longer, or you can change the animation. Let's change the animation. We'll go back to the keyframe at frame 1, turn off the relative extrapolation, and change the Y value to negative 818. So now we're only moving two lines per frame. 
I'll turn on set relative again. Now you'll see as we step through the animation, it's still moving in whole numbers, but now we're only moving two lines per frame, 220, 222, 224, 226, 228, and it just keeps going. Because we're moving in a smaller number of lines for each frame, that makes the crawl longer. So we went from 17 and a half seconds to a scroll of just over 44 seconds. So there you have it. Now you know how to use the text plus node on the Fusion page to create text with character level styling and tab based multi-column layouts, all in a single node. You also learned how to animate in whole lines per frame using the transform node for super smooth credit rolls. Thanks for watching.